Hey guys, Kyle here, back again with another video. We're going to be doing a basic oil change on this 1968 Triumph TR6R, also known as Trusty Rusty. So if you guys have a vintage Triumph motorcycle such as this one right here, feel free to watch the rest of the video and we're going to show you how to change your oil and also give you some tips along the way. All right, so before we do the oil change, I just wanted to give a big shout out to Curtis. He went over to O'Reilly and picked up some oil for this TR6. So what we're going to be putting in the motorcycle today is going to be a Valvoline brand. This is known as the VR1. 2050 multi-grade oil. We've been using this for the past couple years in the shop with great results. We also got our funnel here to be able to put the oil in the oil tank. We got some latex gloves to keep your hands clean and we have our red rags. So now that we got that out the way, let's move forward and go over some tips and tricks and also go over the lubrication system on this vintage Triumph motorcycle. All right, so let's go over the oil lubrication system. So we have an oil tank, also known as the oil bag. This essentially has all the oil for the engine itself. Now the engine itself is also known as a dry sum, which theoretically means that there's gonna be a little bit of oil in the engine, but it doesn't store the oil. Everything is gonna be stored here. So now that I'm approaching 5,000 miles on this engine, I went ahead and did a rebuild a few years back. Um, there's no need for me to remove the filter in the oil tank and the filter at the bottom of the crankcase. And the reason why is because everything has already been gone through, everything's nice and clean. So there's no need for me to do additional work and get my hands really dirty just to change the oil. So what we're gonna be doing today is removing this plug, which is essentially the drain plug. And then we're gonna drain the oil out and then we're gonna put new oil back into the oil tank. Now, for some of you guys that have found a bike that's been sitting a long time and want to know as far as do you have to remove the filter here and the filter at the bottom of the engine, I'm gonna cover that next. All right, so the question's gonna come up and it often does come up, especially on the forums, is when you're changing the oil, do you have to remove the filter from the tank and the filter from the crankcase? Like I said before, if your engine's already gone through and you wanna do an oil change, just remove the plug and drain the oil. However, if you're concerned about the, you know, the oil quality, if there's any debris, there's gonna be a filter here, so you can remove that filter, and that's gonna get everything out the oil tank. You can clean the filter, you can reuse it. Obviously, if it has damage, you can go ahead and replace it. So let's start talking about the crankcase, and we're gonna go underneath the engine so we can give you a better idea of what the plug looks like, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. All right, so we are at the bottom side of my TR6 engine. As you can see, it's really dirty down here, which is normal. We live down a dirt road, and you know, everyday riding, it might look like this. And I do recommend that you clean it before you take the plug out. So if you have a motor like this, it's gonna look something similar to this. Uh, some of the later ones or 500 unit constructions are gonna be a different style, but it's essentially the same thing. So if you remove this plug, there's gonna be a copper washer or O-ring, or depending on the year, and there's gonna be a filter. So once you drop that, there's gonna be oil in the crankcase. Now I said that this is a dry sump, and oftentimes there could be about a cup of oil left behind. Um, so once you go ahead and do that, you clean the filter, put everything back on. Uh, the question usually comes up as, do I have to bleed the oil system because you went ahead and removed the oil? Uh, when you remove the plug, you're going to see a scavenge pipe. So essentially, if you remove the oil, there is a possibility that oil may not return back to the oil tank. If that is a concern, which is usually pretty slim, um, you can remove this plug here on the timing cover. And once you remove the plug on the timing cover, you can kick the engine over. And if you see oil dribble out, then you know that the entire lubrication system has been bled and it's ready to go. All right, so now that we've covered all of that, we are ready to change the oil. So again, we got the Valvoline VR1 motorcycle oil from O'Reilly. We're gonna take the TR6, we're gonna put it up on the lift, and uh, we're gonna change the oil. So let's keep moving forward. All right, you guys, so we got the TR6 on the lift, so we're getting ready to change the oil. One thing that I do recommend to make it a lot easier when you're changing the oil is start the bike up. If you wanna, before you put it in the shop or on the lift, start the bike up for five, 10 minutes. That way the oil can actually get to operating temperatures and it makes it a lot easier for the oil to be removed from the oil tank. With the oil being warmer, the viscosity changes and it makes it easier to drain. So we're gonna start the bike up, we're gonna let it run for about five or 10 minutes, then we're gonna drain the oil. So just doing some preparation before the oil change. I got some cardboard here. And essentially what I'm gonna do is gonna throw some cardboard down here because I wanna keep oil off the ramp and one less thing that I have to clean after I'm done changing the oil. So we got our rag here and we got our funnel. So all we have to do is open up the seat and I'm gonna show you guys underneath the seat and a few things that you can do before you actually put oil in and remove the oil from the oil tank. Boom. Now it might be a little surprising to you guys that it's really dirty under here. Like I said, this is a pretty original bike. But, you know, sometimes looks are a little deceiving because it actually runs pretty good. 
So um, before we put oil in, we're actually gonna do this now. We're gonna clean up all this debris around here. So we got a little bit of oil, a little bit of dirt. You know, this bike gets ridden, so it's not gonna be perfect. So essentially you just wanna clean everything up here and around the filler neck, just to make sure that when you're putting oil inside that you don't want any debris, excuse me, any debris falling inside the oil tank itself. So just a good cleanup around here. Once we feel comfortable and safe that it's clean, we can remove the cap and then we're going to clean all the way underneath. Now we're ready to remove the oil. All right, so we got our bucket here. Obviously this is probably a little overkill, but you guys get the idea. Um, we're gonna get our funnel on the side here. We're gonna loosen up the drain plug, which is not too tight. This one's pretty cool. Um, it has a magnetic plug on it, so if there's any fuzz or any debris floating, floating around inside your oil tank, um, it's gonna catch all that. So try to get this as close as we can so we don't make a mess. So everyone's gonna have a different way of doing this. This is my way, so you'll have to find something that works for you guys. So the oil should be nice and warm, so it should flow out nice and easy. Oh, there we go. So obviously with the oil being drained, we can always check the quality of the oil. Here is the um, plug here. So there's a little bit of fuzz. It's got 5,000 miles on the motor. So on a new motor, you got a little bit of a, you know piston rings and buildup and things of that sort that's gonna be on a magnetic plug, so that's not concerning. Uh, the, the more often that you change the oil, or more frequently, uh, you'll start to see less and less fuzz, so that is not a concern. So the oil is almost done being drained, so this uh, drain plug here needs to be cleaned. So I'm gonna go in the back of the shop to the solvent tank. We're gonna go ahead and clean this off, and we're gonna do some inspecting off camera of the fuzz just to make sure there's nothing of concern. But from what I see, just dirty oil and it needs to be changed. So um, like I said before, I got 5,000 miles on this engine. I've been doing oil changes at 1,000 miles, uh, anywhere from 500 to 1,000 to be honest. Sometimes it's kind of leaning more to the 1,000. So we're actually gonna start doing 500 miles. Um, we just want the engine to last a long time. So, you know, oil can be expensive, you know, but if you put a good quality engine oil in it, it should last some time and hopefully your motor will last a long time. So it's an investment, that's how I look at it. So um, we're gonna let this finish draining. We're gonna go in the back of the shop and clean this plug. And then I'm gonna show you guys the next steps on what I do to uh, prepare this oil tank for uh, our new Valvoline VR1 oil. All right, I'm just gonna clean the funnel off here. Get all the oil, old oil out. And then we got the magnetic drain plug here. So, very little fuzz buildup. So everything looks fine. No particles, no chunks. Um, so we're looking really good. Perfect. So uh, now that we got this clean, we're going to clean some of this uh, Yama Bond that I put on the fiber washers. Sometimes a fiber washer isn't really good enough to uh, have an adequate seal. So I just usually put some Yama Bond around the fiber washer and then I install it into the oil tank. So with that being said, I think we're good to go. We're going to head back to the shop and uh, we're gonna put the plug back in the oil tank and then we're gonna fill the tank up with oil and um, we'll go from there. So we got the um, drain plug all cleaned up. This is a magnetic drain plug. We're gonna apply some Yama Bond around the fiber washer. So like I said, this is probably overkill, but I've had with fiber washers not sealing because the fiber washer is very hard and it's not soft like a cork washer or an O-ring. So, we're just gonna put some Yamba Bond on there, then we're gonna slide it on, and now we're ready to install the drain plug back on the oil tank. So we're going to install the plug, just trying to clean up uh, as much oil as I can from the tank. There's a little bit still coming out, which is gonna be fine, so that means we just have to move fast. We're gonna thread that in place. Now what's uh, great about the Yamba Bond, or like Permatex Gray, um, or a lot of Permatex products, um, it works really well and seals pretty good even when there's, uh, you know, oil contaminants around it. So we're going to snug this up. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. Keep everything nice and clean. All right, there we go. So we got that nice and tight. Now we're going to go to the top and put oil in the oil tank. All right, you guys, let's have a quick chat about Valvoline VR1. So this is Valvoline VR1 2050. Uh, we got it from O'Reilly. Curtis got it from O'Reilly, so I appreciate that. You can also get it at AutoZone, but it's not as common. I found them more common or readily available at O'Reilly. So you can get it from anywhere you want, or you can just buy it online. 
uh, VR1 comes in different grades. There's also mono grade, like 30 weight, 40, 50 weight. This one's a 2050. So for 650s, 500s, a lot of bikes, British bikes, 2050 is kind of a universal type of multi-grade oil that you can use in these bikes. So a lot of guys use like Shell Rotella. They'll use um, different brands of oil, which is totally fine. This is something that I've always used and it works out pretty good. So we're actually gonna put this oil inside the oil tank. We got the funnel nice and clean. So let's go over here and fill it up. And I think I mentioned this before, uh, VR1 has a high zinc rating or additive rating. So it's really good for our flat tappet uh, camshaft followers. So it's just gonna go all in. So before we finish putting oil in the tank, I wanted to stop and visually look in the tank to see how much oil or as far as a level. So it seemed like we're somewhere down here. Now, this is a 1968 bike, and it's probably irrele irrelevant to some of you guys, but it might be relevant to many that don't have a dipstick on the actual cap. So this one doesn't have a dipstick on the cap. It actually goes off the filler neck as far as the dimension that goes all the way down to the oil. So I don't have the dimension with me at this second. Later on, we're going to look in a workshop manual so we can actually figure that out to make sure that we have the right oil height. If you're in doubt, you can just eyeball it somewhere in this area here. Obviously right here was the minimum oil, so it's gotta be somewhere in there. You don't want it too high, you don't want it too low. Oil acts as a uh, more of a coolant. So it actually cools the engine, lubricates it, and uh, keeps it at a good operating temperature. So now that we got that covered, let's put a little bit more oil in there, and then we're gonna check along the way. I found it, you guys. So the level in the oil tank should be an inch and a half below the filler cap. So this is not for all Triumph, this is for the unit construction uh, models that do not have a dipstick on the cap. So if you guys have one of those caps that hasn't been upgraded to like the ones that we sell, um, keep that in mind, inch and a half below the filler cap. So now that we got that, we're gonna put a little bit more oil, then we're gonna measure it, and if we got the inch and a half, then the job is done. All right, so we have our caliper here. You could probably use a tape measure, uh, inch and a half. So we're just gonna stick it in here. Now it said below the filler neck, which would be the base up here. It doesn't have to be perfect, we'll eyeball it about there and let's see oh, got a little bit of oil there so we're gonna be good to go so now that we have the oil back in the oil tank what I recommend is actually starting the motorcycle and checking to make sure that the oil is returning to the tank so if you did remove the sump plug from the bottom of the crankcase like I said before just make sure that you actually bleed the engine if necessary to make sure that you have oil and no air in the line so now that we got that sorted out let's start the bike up we're going to check the oil flow after that we can call this job done Hey guys, now that we got the oil changed, I just want to let you guys know, just a little tip that I do here at the shop, good habit. Don't just ride it, ride it. All right, which means write it down. All right, so we did an oil change here and basically log everything. So on this particular bike, I have some information here. My last oil change was on August 17th. So that just tells you how little I ride this particular bike. And you can see some of my history here as far as what I've done to the bike. So it's really a good habit to get into as far as writing everything down. So we're gonna write down today's date, the type of oil and the mileage. So that way when we do our next oil change interval, we'll know that we have to be somewhere in that range, you know, whether you fall into the 500 mile, 1000 mile, or if you wanna do the manual it says 4,000 miles. So anyways, uh, this is going to wrap up today's video. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, thanks so much. You guys have a great weekend and uh, we appreciate your support and the business.